Hello again. Okay, lecture number five, we're going to introduce blood pressure. Extremely important topic for uh, unit three. Probably not a surprise to you to know that blood pressure is important. All right, come on, computer, cooperate. <clears throat> okay, definition here. This is probably not going to be a surprise to you, but the term blood flow, we'll be using that term quite a bit as we discuss blood pressure. And uh, the blood flow just refers to what is the volume of blood that is flowing through at a particular time through a vessel or an organ. Or you could talk about the blood flow throughout the entire body. So that's probably not a surprise to you. know, Blood flow can increase or decrease. If it decreases too much, then a particular organ body location is not going to receive enough oxygen and nutrients. And... Um, that can lead to hypoxia, that can lead to tissue death, it can lead to an infarction. Remember that term where you have a tissue death due to uh, a lack of oxygen being received by a tissue. Blood flow is given in the milliliters of blood passing to that location um, within a given minute. Now when you're thinking about the whole body, the entire cardiovascular system, uh, it's in milliliters per minute. So for all of your blood vessels, the blood flow is going to be equivalent to your cardiac output. Because cardiac output is given in milliliters per minute. So in one minute, the volume of blood that's being pumped out of the heart is going to be equal to the blood that is passing through the entire cardiovascular system. All right, when you're at rest, blood flow is essentially pretty constant, but um, it will vary based on your needs. You know, when you're exercising, you're going to have increased blood flow to your skeletal muscles to help you uh, get through, you know, your uh, that period of exercise, for example. All right, so what determines your blood flow? What keeps blood flowing through the body? It's your blood pressure. If you don't have blood pressure, and again, I usually the analogy I usually use for blood pressure is think about water flowing through a garden hose. If you press on the walls of the garden hose, that is going to increase the water pressure in the hose. The water is going to flow faster. If you relax your grip on the garden hose, water is going to flow more slowly. And um, on top of that, you can also almost think about your faucet, the faucet handle as being like the heart because that's the source of the water passing through the hose. Your heart is the source of the blood. So the more water that's coming out of the faucet, the increased water pressure you'll have in the hose as well. As you guys know, same thing with your heart. If more blood is coming out of the heart with each uh, heartbeat, that is going to increase the amount of blood in your blood vessels and that is going to wind up increasing your blood pressure. So that's a important concept to think about as well. Blood pressure literally means it's the amount of force per unit of area that's being exerted on the wall of a blood vessel by the blood inside it. And um, when we measure it, it's given in millimeters. MMHG means millimeters of mercury. And um, you know that's the conventional method for measuring pressures. And that's because the older types of pressure gauges, which are still in use, but the uh, in the past they were like the only type of pressure gauges that we had. And pressure made mercury move up a gauge. And how far that mercury moved up the gauge lets you know what the pressure was. And that was measured in, in millimeters. So that's why we measure things in millimeters of mercury. Now when you take a blood pressure reading or somebody is commenting about their blood pressure, uh, that is referring to their arterial blood pressure in larger air arteries that are fairly close to the heart. Okay, blood pressure is not equal in the blood pressures throughout your body. Uh, you have a pressure gradient, which means your pressure starts out high near the heart and then that pressure gradually drops as you move through the cardiovascular system. So it's going to be lowest in the large veins that are approaching, pressure is going to be higher uh, highest in the aorta because that's the big 
artery that receives blood immediately as it's being pumped out of the heart. It's important to have this gradient of higher pressure to lower pressure. That's what keeps the blood flowing in one direction. Blood flow is a one-way street. That's something I'll be preaching to you over on the blood vessel anatomy side because that's important for understanding circulation and how blood flows from one location to another. Okay, this diagram, um, let's see, did I miss a slide here? No, I guess I did. thought maybe I missed a slide here for a second. This is a diagram from your textbook. This is figure 19.6 from your text. And so as I mentioned, blood pressure gradually decreases as you move across the blood vessels of the body. And uh, this chart is showing you the blue lines. The upper blue line up here represents maximum blood pressure. That's also called systolic pressure. Okay. Maximum blood pressure is called systolic pressure. Um, and then this lower line here represents the lowest blood pressure that exists within the blood vessels. And that is called the diastolic pressure. Now hopefully those words are reminding you of systole and diastole in the heart. Okay. Um, systolic blood pressure, the highest blood pressures are going to occur right after ventricular systole from the heart when the blood, uh, when the heart pumps blood out into the aorta and that blood starts to flow from the aorta into the other large arteries. That's when you have your highest blood pressure. You have more blood in those vessels at that time. So it's pressing up against the walls. That's going to be your systolic pressure. The pressure will gradually drop as blood flows through those arteries downstream through the cardiovascular system, through your circulatory system. When the blood pressure meets minimum, you know, just before the next heartbeat forces more blood into the arteries, that's called your diastolic pressure. Okay, so both of those are definitions you guys should know. Typical average blood pressure reading 120 over 80 you know, you may have heard before that 120 is called the diastolic pressure, 80 is called the systolic pressure, and those types of pressure readings occur in uh, larger arteries that are fairly close to the heart. Now, in between the two, you have the mean pressure, that is your average pressure. So the max is your systolic, the minimum is your diastolic, and then in between the two, you have your mean, or what is the average pressure within a blood vessel at any uh, given time. And this is going to vary with each heartbeat. The heart pumps blood out of the ventricles and into the uh, arteries. You hit your systolic pressure and then it gradually drops down to your diastolic pressure. Well the measurement, the average pressure during that period of time is your mean pressure. And then the heart pumps more blood out and boom you hit your systolic pressure once again. Okay, systolic pressure average in a healthy, normal adult is considered to be 120 millimeters of mercury. That is going to vary from individual to individual. The diastolic pressure is um, the lower reading that on average is around 80 in average healthy people. Now, some people have quibbles with that. There are some people who say that 120 over 80 might be the normal pressure in adults here in the modern era with the uh, typical diet that we eat that's very high in things like sodium, um, which tends to cause us to retain more water. Water follows sodium and uh, that tends uh, to cause us to retain more water in our bloodstream and other body fluids. And so there are some people who think our, our average 120 over 80 pressure is actually pretty high. And if you go on a low sodium diet, um, your average blood pressure reading may actually fall below that. Some people think it would be more like 110 over 70 or maybe even a little bit lower would, would be a truly healthy type of blood pressure. Pulse pressure, that's another term you guys should be familiar with. That's the difference between the systolic and the diastolic pressures. 
So your pulse pressure, if your systolic is 120, your diastolic is 80, your pulse pressure is going to be 40 millimeters of mercury. That's the difference between the two. And as I mentioned, the mean, or the MAP, mean arterial pressure, is the average pressure that exists within a blood vessel at any given time. Okay, so uh, blood pressure is going to, you know, I really didn't spend enough time on that. Let me back up. Let's take another look at this diagram over here. Notice how your mean blood pressure here gradually falls across the different types of uh, blood vessels we've been discussing. So it's highest in the arteries. It gradually drops as you enter the arterioles. It continues to drop through the capillaries and your capillary beds. Beyond the capillaries, it drops even lower. It gets lower in the venules, even lower in the veins. And then finally, I mean, you're getting pretty close to zero when you're in your vena cava the inferior or the superior vena cava. Now that's necessary in order to ensure proper blood flow. All right, so some of this information we talked about before, you know, on a previous lecture about veins, we mentioned already that uh, blood pressure is low in the veins. They have those little floppy, squishy walls and so, you know, how does blood actually continue to flow back toward the heart, especially from your limbs, which are lower than the heart, and so you're fighting against gravity to make that happen. Well, we talked about how veins have valves in them, which help ensure this one-way one flow of blood. Okay, y'all, uh, I'm having my little iPad that I draw on. It's not cooperating with me today. So I'm about to have iPad rage. If you see me grab this thing and throw it across the room, that's why it's just not cooperating. Okay, here we go. Uh, so we've talked, we've talked about how your veins, especially in the limbs, have valves that help prevent the black back flow of blood from the extremities as it's heading back toward the heart. But there are some other things that help ensure that the blood keeps moving through the veins in spite of the low pressure. Uh, one thing is contraction of your skeletal muscles. That's called the muscular pump. Um, that helps kind of milk the blood back toward the heart. And your skeletal muscles, yes, they contract voluntarily when you want to make movements. But if you guys remember from Biology 201, you also have skeletal muscle tone, which means your skeletal muscles are in a partial state of contraction all the time. That helps you maintain your uh, posture and normal positioning of the body. Respiratory pump, um, as you breathe, you have pressure changes that take place um, in your abdominal pelvic cavity. If you think about it, your chest cavity gets bigger when you inhale and it gets smaller as you exhale. So as your thoracic cavity up here gets larger as you're inhaling air into the lungs, that compresses your abdominal pelvic cavity. So the pressure in your abdominal pelvic cavity that exists because of that also helps force blood up the uh, through the veins, and especially that inferior vena cava, and back toward the heart. Okay, and then also venoconstriction. Vasoconstriction refers to constriction of blood vessels in general. Venoconstriction or venoconstriction refers more specifically to the veins. Uh, the walls of your veins, the larger veins, uh, contain smooth muscle that's under control of your sympathetic nervous system and if those nerves send signals to the walls of the veins that will cause them to constrict and help push blood back toward the heart. Here's a pretty good diagram from your textbook which is showing you what I was just talking about the muscular pump you know here's a fairly large vein moving back moving blood back toward the heart you know there's what valves look like little flaps that help prevent the back flow of blood and this vein is passing between a couple of skeletal muscles and as those contract they help milk or squeeze the blood upward all right so that's just a little quick introduction to blood pressure um, the next lecture we're going to start uh, discussing some of the factors that affect blood pressure and then we're going to start getting into blood pressure control your body uh, spends a lot of effort helping you maintain blood pressure homeostasis that's extremely important for your survival.